Welcome to Weld.com. I have Garrett Vickery with us today. For, uh, he's our NDT instructor, uh, our new NDT instructor. And I have asked him to come down and uh, demonstrate something for us. I, I think we've, we've talked about processes for non-destructive testing, <clears throat> one of them being dye penetrant. And there are a couple of methods of dye penetrant. Garrett, we've got just regular old the spray can dye. Yep, just typical red dye, visible penetrant. No fluorescence, no black lights necessary. Okay, but, but since you miss, mentioned fluorescent, that's the other one that I was kind of wanting to lead into. And Correct. that's the one that you put the, what is it, Zyglo looking right. stuff in there and light it up in yes, a sir. black light. Yep, bright so, green as opposed so to the red. being old and blind like me, if I can't see it, you're going to say, well, come over here and I'll really show it to you. Right. That's kind of that deal. Mm -hmm. I think I made, and I want to do this, um, I made a test sample for your program a long time ago, and it was a groove weld, and I put a piece of copper in the weld metal and kept, and I welded over the top of it, and it just makes it crack. Wow. Okay, and I, I came out of it, it was a big old thick piece, and I think when I got to the very last pass, mm -hmm. you really couldn't see it visually. Covered it up, yeah. But man, when you lit it up with the old black light, it was like a spider web just screaming at you. Mm. So you brought down a couple of samples here, one yeah. of them being a, a test sample, yeah. uh, a Flawtech test sample. And I see a little bug hole, a couple of things in there. Mm -hmm. You know, just looking at that from the outside, <clears throat> we don't see. I mean, the well's been kind of sanded and cleaned up a little bit. Looks like we've got some surface rough from people handling it uh, and there's some toe indications some toe indications on there not that bad of a root but it looks like there might be something going on with that root as well and then the other one you brought down is a piece of um, titanium uh, 6-4 titanium and just you know I mean to me looking at the bead the bead doesn't look that bad as far as profile, a little flat, but what I'm seeing are some indications that kind of arc off across here. Now, I don't know what you're going to pick up with the B-roll zooming in, but to me, it, 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 you know, it looks like it's got some kind of a crystalline look to mm -hmm. it or something like it tried to crack, maybe lack of... Uh, trailing shield or something maybe it cooled off too quick I don't know so what's the process here what are we going to do so what we're going to do is like you mentioned earlier is I've cleaned the surface there because with a surface inspection if your surface isn't pristine then it's a worthless inspection and um, then but this and this process just lends itself mm -hmm. to surface we're not correct the surface and, and very up minor surface. subsurface mm -hmm. stuff so porosity lack of fusion in the toe and maybe some of these this, if there's a crack in here Correct. that's coming off of that weld. Correct. Okay. All of it has to be open to the surface. Okay. So we're going to shoot some blood on there first. Mm -hmm. and Correct. Then here. Apply it. And we can apply it by spraying it, dipping it. I'm, we're going to brush it today in the essence of control. Um, and then we'll allow that to dwell. And utilizing the penetrance property of capillary action, it's going to creep. Good word. I Good, think I yes, used sir. that in here before <laughs> for brazing techniques. Yeah. Nice. Welcome creeps, to our world. Man. Creeps in there gets into things that are open and we let it set. Okay. Um, then we're going to wipe it off as clean as can be. We don't want to see any more red after we wipe it. Allow that to dry for some time because we're going to use some solvent to assist in that. And then go back over with a developer that's going to reverse that capillary and pull out anything that was left inside of there. So, so the developer would be like a, a, a contrast Correct. Like what, a, yeah, a bright white. white as opposed to the bright red there. Right here is gotcha. what we're using. Okay, so, so once you put the developer on there, I mean, you, what's it, just turn it kind of a white talcum looking yes. stuff on there, but if I see any bleeders, any red spots, you just know right in Correct. a hurry. Okay. Oh, yeah. Interesting. And okay. we'll see the evaporation of that happen. You'll see it kind of come in on itself, and then it's, in, it's interesting to see. Okay. Well, let's, let's, uh, get to it. let's do the, let's do do the, light, the penetrant. Light brush here. We're just gonna apply it. Wow, that went quick. Yep. That stuff's pretty thin and thin flowing, isn't it? Yes, sir. It'll get right down in any known surface flaws. Mm -hmm. A little will do ya, but over time, throughout that dwell time, it'll start to kind of coagulate, similar to blood. 
and we want it to stay nice and wet so we can re-wet it throughout that dwell time which will you take us dwell 10 time minutes. it's like your 10 minute sit time that's correct okay so we're going to let this set for a minute then yes sir we'll be back in a we'll be back in a few welcome back we have let this set for a good 10 minutes mm -hmm. like you said it kind of coagulated it got a little thick didn't it yes sir but we re-wetted it periodically. I'd, I'd touch that, but I'd wear it for a couple of days, yes, wouldn't sir. I? Yes, Oh, yes. Okay. Just in handling it, I've ended up looking like a red leopard, but we went. So now the process is to wipe excess off? Correct. Or, okay. So we're right. going to go ahead and start wiping here. Just first off, start with a paper towel and get it off of there. And then we'll go back through with a solvent dampened cloth to and get take, it the rest of the and way. And take anything else off. Correct. It gives you a good background to pop off of too, so it, it just sticks out at you. There's no fail. It's either good or bad, is what you're saying. Yes, sir. I'm really hoping that that opened up. That titanium weld just, I mean, it's a decent looking weld for profile, but again, there's just something funny about it, the way it, the way it looks. Oh, welcome back. We've let our solvent evaporate. Mm -hmm. Mr. Vickery is getting ready to throw down with some developer love here. Mm -hmm. So this is this is the white contrast. This Correct. Is what's in that stuff? It's a cakey consistency, almost like powdered sugar. Okay. So when you spray that on there, mm -hmm. it's going to be we we got to wait or there by is a code, by code we got to wait, but you'll Correct. be able to see something fairly quick. Correct. If we, like I said previously, it's an involved dwell time. As opposed to earlier, you can just walk away and come back and re-wet it periodically. Right. We want to watch the evaporation happen, and, and that'll make sense here in a moment. Okay. All right. Ready? Let's when I'm doing this, I want to start off of it and finish off of it, because if I spray direct, we could blow something out. Okay. So that's kind of how we're going to do that. And too little is far better than too much, because we don't want to cover up. So you could essentially cake that on there to the point where you're just correct. See what I'm see what I'm referencing here? It's coming in a little darker and then it kind of closes together on itself. Wow. Well they've got a lot of indications all down the mm -hmm. toe of that weld. And that's a major bleeder right there. That's correct. And looks like I missed there on that one. That does look a little light on this one here. Far better to have less. I'm noticing something way down here on the end, mm -hmm. but then I'm noticing along the toe of the weld, I'm seeing a little bit of indication. Mm -hmm. I'm not seeing these arc things that they just look like cracks that come off of this grain in this weld. I'm not seeing mm -hmm. those open up at all. It very well may be they're not open to the surface. They could just be there, you know. Why is the toe, I mean, it's showing a little bit, mm -hmm. not like this down here. That's a little bit of that non-relevant red that we were talking about previously, as opposed to this deep. This is down here? Correct. Non-relevant, meaning you just didn't wipe it all off. Correct. So in that case, you'd go in there and would you clean the entire thing off or just that part of it? Yep, I can just spot wipe that, redevelop it, and if there's enough penetrant like this one, I could wipe it two, three times and it'd still keep coming back because it's trapped enough penetrant there, whereas that one, it wouldn't come back even after a first try. So now by code, we're gonna, we're gonna wait 10 minutes? Correct. So we don't need to on the one closest to you. That's a bleeder. Yes. That's, that has problems. So as an NDT person, are you, are you calling out what it is other than the fact that you know it's a bleeder? Are you gonna make the determination that it is lack of fusion? Mm -hmm. Yes, You're, sir. Because uh, depending on the type of indication where it's lack of fusion versus a little surface porosity, like we even have a couple of little one, two, three, four dots there of some surface oh, out porosity. Here in the, out here in you the... Know. They have different tolerances for undercut versus lack of fusion, one being more critical than the other. Okay. So we have to have that knowledge where it's a good partnership between welding and NDT to, to know how that process works um, to give you that foresight. Okay. So... Obviously, we don't need to wait the 10 minutes. This one here, I don't want to move it because it's set for the camera. 
Are we seeing anything in this one here that would cause you to call that one out? This sharp, fine line right here could possibly be geometry, the way that they blended that together. But to me, I believe, you know, better. On the top side toe of Correct. this weld here is what you're saying. Correct. Okay. Possible lack of fusion. So, but I wouldn't think so. Looking nope. at the weld on both sides and studying the weld, I don't know that that's lack of fusion. I, I'd, I'd go back to geometry. Mm -hmm. So what if we wipe that, re-wipe that mm -hmm. real quick? Yeah and shot it again. So I'm just gonna wipe heavy along yep. the toe of the weld. We'll see what happens the second round. By far mm -hmm. less, but I'm still seeing yeah. something right here open up. Yes, sir. Color differentiation. Huh. Okay, so <clears throat> The one closest to you is obvious. It's got problems. Mm -hmm. It's a, that's rejected. Okay. Absolutely. Um, this part here, it's still in suspect. Correct. What would we do at this point? We would demand a little more sensitivity with visible being on the lower range of that. Um, okay. On a, on a system quality panel, it'll get a half of a star. So there's five starburst cracks on a sensitivity panel and okay. it'll get one but the industry technically calls it a sensitivity level zero, okay. where we'd have to step into the fluorescent booth and demand that, that higher quality. Fluorescent? Correct. So that would be a good candidate to go light up with the black light and the... Yes, sir. Cool. Let's go do that, you want to? Yeah, sure. All right. Okay, so we had the uh, fluorescent penetrant on there, and now you're rinsing that off, just Correct. like we did with the developer thing. You, uh, anything in control here as far as yes, code-wise, I mean, pressure, temperature, you... All of those things, yes, sir. And distance away from the part as well. Really? Yes, we don't want to be right butted up on here and spray, and then, because we'll blow out where that penetrant is, is staying put. So we're cleaning the part, uh, got, got oh, certain... Good temperature and pressure of water and you're just kind of you're 10 to 12 inches away you're not blasting right down on top of it correct okay so uh you doing any wiping from here or just letting it air no dry wiping. yes sir and we have a dryer here that is at a also temperature wise yeah, specific. I can feel that's nice and warm there yes about. sir and i don't want to lay it flat on this rack here because there could be residual penetrant there and that would show up definitely okay. so we'll just let that dry okay nice warm air yeah. how long would go for that that's also five minutes. Everything is five and ten minutes. Everything takes time. It's hurry up and wait, Bob. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So we go five minutes of dry time on here. Correct. All right. And we'll be back for the developer. All right. We'll be back in just a second. Welcome back. We uh, we shot the uh, dye penetrant on here, with, and we're getting ready to. We rinse this thing off. We let it dry for the appropriate five minutes. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we're getting ready to do an indication here or the final part of this mm -hmm. underneath the black light. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're clean and dry. Visually, I don't, I mean, I don't see anything on here. Let's put him right. underneath the black light and see if anything <laughs> lights up. Uh, can you drop that down a little bit further? Oh, I can see all your fingerprints. <laughs> Process controls. Okay, so. Actually, you're up here to do the test up Correct. in the viewing window. Bring it up here just a little bit. I don't see, I see absolutely nothing in that whole piece. Mm -hmm. And that's a testament of, you know, visually you can swear something. I, on, but the I would have bet the cameraman's paycheck that there was something in there the way that grain structure laid out yeah. and went transverse across the weld mm -hmm. and even got over into the parent metal. I swore there it would have shown something in there, but it shows absolutely nothing. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm seeing, aside from your fingerprints, I'm seeing little bitty dots. Mm -hmm. What, what, is that anything in the surface of the metal or is that something that's just on there just from... That's just a process control, it's similar to the non-relevant things <clears throat> um, with the visible penetrant. Um, so, there's nothing, I mean, you could, at this point, you would say, what, wipe it off and just yep. see if it's, see if there's something on there? We have that same process. So I just lightly can, touch that with mm -hmm. my finger, it disappears. Yeah, and then we go back over it. With fluorescent, we use a dry powder as opposed to the uh, 
the aerosol can because it's a little less invasive. Okay. And again, nothing. Wow, that's uh, mm -hmm. that's that's crazy. She may not be pretty, but still in structurally integrous. Wow. I, you know, looking at this thing, when we had this thing out on the table and we did the regular, can I wipe this off yeah, with yeah. my finger? You know, this grain structure just looks strange to me. And by the, you get this in the light, the, the right light, and you see these things arcing off across here. Man, I would have, I would have thought that those would have opened up into cracks yeah. and it would have shown up in yeah. here. Nothing. That's cool. True test. We could bend test it, Bob. You could. Well, see what happens to that. See if world. she holds up. You guys are you guys are non-destructive. <laughs> yeah, I'm destructive. Yeah, yeah. Well, a bend test would be a soundness check. Mm. It had nothing to do with that. Um, it wouldn't have anything to do with that structure across there. Mm. What would be the next test? On my end of the world, we could try like a magnetic particle. Since this is only surf only surface inspection, mag particle, we get a little penetration underneath the surface, and we could see um, if those if those things pop up that direction. Okay, well they're not popping up to the surface, so how Correct. would they, I mean that's, that's interesting. So you, if, if we did a destructive test or if we did some other method, x-ray or whatever, we would be looking through the part, looking internally at that point. Correct. Okay, interesting stuff. I appreciate your time. Sure. That, was, that was, I learned a lot and I hope you did too. So. Thanks for watching Weld.com. Please subscribe to our videos. Thank you.